Hi, I'm Laura, and this is Let's Buy a Boat. He said, When we bought Elpis, she had no enclosure, so I had to sew one. I briefly dabbled with sewing 20 years earlier, so this was a big project for me. There's lots of websites and videos out there on what to do when you build enclosures and other sewing tips. However, no one shows you what mistakes to avoid. So that's what I'm going to do. So here are my 34 tips on how to build an enclosure. Account for the roll when placing your tracks. You don't want your panels down all the time. So rolling them when not in use is a good option. But this must be accounted for when you're installing your track. Strata glass should roll inward so that the dirt coming off the roof doesn't get stuck in it. So the track has to be placed appropriately around obstructions such as poles. The shade part can be rolled outwards as it drains well. But you still may want to plan your track so the rolled material doesn't protrude out beyond the bimney and get dirty. The side roll. Corner panels won't roll upwards because of their shape, so they'll need to be rolled sideways. I originally installed the lifting window flap and found it was only useful when accessing the winch under sail when it was raining because it minimised some rain entering the cockpit. The side roll is a much better option and allows more airflow. Design with the factory's material dimensions in mind. This applies to the material width when sold off the roll and the stratoglass dimensions as it's sold as sheets. For example, where possible, I used a sheet of strata glass as a full enclosure panel, rather than using part of the sheet and wasting the offcut. A caveat to the above is account for one inch of lost glass around your edges. My strata glass sheets came with fogging around the edges. The company advised that this is the result of glass sheets being machined together and could not be avoided. However, this wasn't advertised on any website I came across. Ensure panels are a manageable size for ease of rolling up and deploying in the rain by just one person. Also, manoeuvring through your sewing machine and an appropriate size for off-season storage in the space available to you. A couple of my panels are a touch too long and require two people to roll them up. If you need more height or width to a panel, Extend it by using a chafe guard material, such as Shelterite. This approach of designing according to the factory dimensions available can make planning more time consuming, but you'll save money. Peer review. Before submitting your order, have another sewer review your plan and materials list. Ideally someone that has done this before, as they may pick up rookie errors. Being a full-time cruiser, I don't have easy access to a mailing address. And since I save my projects for when I'm away from the mainland and cruising, the orders need to be right so that all the materials are on the boat and ready for the project. Write materials for your project. Everyone will have an opinion on what material you should use, which, while it may be well-intentioned, it can also be completely overwhelming. So keep in mind, this is your project. You'll need to research what materials are going to work for you and your budget. For example, I use Strata Glass 40 gauge because it provided good clarity but could still be easily rolled fairly tight. And I used Fifatex Plus, which has a 92.5% shade factor, compared to the standard Fifatex, which has a 70% shade factor. Visibility-wise, standard Fifatex is better, but 
As a ginger, I need that shade. Protect your clears with paper when sewing. I received strata glass shipped with paper sheets separating each panel. Keep the paper in place and sew through it. This will protect the glass from scratching on your environment and the machine. Once complete, tear the paper sheet sideways from under the stitching so as not to disturb the thread tension. If yours doesn't arrive with paper, then use a linen sheet underneath your glass. But be sure not to sew it into your stitches. Strata glass straps from scraps. I originally used yellow sombrella bias tape as straps to secure the glass when they were rolled up. But it was a bit of an eyesore. They flapped around and they became mouldy quickly. Straps made from strata glass has worked much better. I use the scrapped off cuts for these straps. The straps are clear, so aren't easily seen and they're heavy and stiff, so they don't flap around. Disguise the grime between cleans. The flat and light coloured Fifatex I use for my lime bags quickly showed dirt and mould soon after cleaning. So I opted for the colour Platinum in the Fifatex Plus for my shade panels. This was to disguise the dirt between cleanings and any stubborn stains. Patterning material. Patterning takes time, but it does save you from making mistakes and reduces wastage. For simple panels, just use a plastic paint drop sheet that are available from hardware stores. They will do the job on simple shapes and are only $10 for about 10 times 20 foot area. Whereas for complex panels, such as corners or curved edges around the helm, Use a proper patterning material, such as Durascrim, and take your time. It is more expensive at $310 for the same area of 2 by 100 foot. Chef guarding anchor points. As these anchor points are under tension and have a tendency to vibrate in the wind, they're prone to chafing. I have used Shelterite as a chafe guard around all my anchor points on the shade screen and the strata glass enclosure. Except for where zippers are installed, as these panels are a nice firm fit, so they don't vibrate. Drain your chafe guard. I installed chafe guards as a simple hem but discovered later that in the rain the hems collected water which didn't easily drain out and this weighted down the panel. So I cut drainage slits along the bottom edge of the chafe guard to reduce strain on the bimini tracks. Panel anchors. Keep it simple. Give anchor points careful consideration, but try not to be disheartened if they don't turn out how you hoped. We used some anchor points initially that did not work out. Adjustable, self-locking rotating hooks on polyester webbing. So it was back to the drawing board for us, but that doesn't mean they won't work for you. For example, these panels were installed using anchor points connected directly to the lifelines for better airflow. But these became a trip hazard and given the lifelines are flexible these panels fluttered in even the lightest of winds which caused an annoying flapping sound and unneeded strain on the bimini tracks. Due to the flapping on the lifelines one of our tracks even broke and required replacement. 
This anchor setup also didn't stand up to more than 25 knots of wind. That's 45 kilometres an hour. This left me having to physically hold onto the screen so nothing would break. We ended up gluing snap fasteners directly to the deck instead. Again, these didn't hold up to high winds and they popped off. So we ended up screwing snaps into the gel coat of the deck, which has worked really well. Some examples of other anchor points that did work for me are webbing loops sewn into the panel's chafe guard and pad eyes installed into the boat, connected using self-locking hooks on bungee cord. In some locations where pad eyes weren't required, the panels were still anchored using a webbing loop on the panel end, but secured to the boat using bungee cord with a self-locking hook, which attached to a handrail on the boat. Another anchoring option is heavy duty buckles on webbing. We use these around our dinghy davit poles. Adjustable anchors. Use adjustable equipment for anchor points where possible, for ease of installation, and because materials may stretch over time. Or materials can relax, constrict with temperature changes. Examples are adjustable buckles and hooks on webbing, or hooks on bungee cord, which can be cut shorter if needed. So allow a little extra length to be sure. Double anchor. I attached an extra line of snap fasteners on my Fivertex panels, so they anchor to the base zipper on windy days without flapping around in the wind. They continue to shade the cockpit, whether the enclosure is down or not. This double anchor approach is handy underway, as when we're sailing and using the winches, the screens don't get in the way as a trip hazard. Drilling gel coat. You have to pre-drill into the gel coat before screwing in snap fastening the buttons. Make sure the drill bit is one size larger than you might expect. When pre-drilling wood for a screw, the drill bit is usually the size of the screw core. This doesn't work with gel coat. It resulted in several snap screws and damage needing repair which was followed by a snapped husband. Grease pencil. Yep, it works. And it is easily cleaned off. Bulldog clips. Bulldog clips are great for holding bulky and thick materials in place when sewing pins are not suitable for the task. As with pins, slide the clip off before the material goes under the presser foot. Get all zipped up. We installed FlexaTrack to the Bimini roof and sewed half a zip to the enclosure panel and the other zip half to the key to rope which slid into the track. By using zippers to attach your panels to the Bimini roof, this makes for easy removal and easy cleaning. Dolrin zipper pulls. Fuselon zippers are made of Delrin plastic. They're UV resistant, as are the metal zips, 
but more importantly, the delrin stands up well to corrosion in the salty environment. To finish sip or continue a sip? That is the question. There are two zipper types, continuous and finished. Use continuous zips when one end of the material will be remaining together. An example of this everyday use are trouser flies. I use these on the sunshade doorway and windows for winch access. Use finished zippers where a panel will be totally unzipped and removed, such as their everyday use on a jacket. I use these where the enclosure panels connect to the Kida rope in the mounted track. So the panel could be removed for long-term storage or cleaning. The finished zippers have a box and pin factory machined into the material. However, they are still able to be cut to a shorter length if needed. This box and pin setup stopped the two sides of the zip from separating under force, such as in winds. Now I accidentally purchased 80 foot of continuous zip, which resulted in tears being shed. To overcome this issue, I DIY'd a finished zipper by buying some metal box and pins online and glued and plied these onto a continuous zip. This fix was all fine, until it came to a windy day and the DIY finished zipper didn't stand up to winds above 25 knots. The factory machine boxes are stronger than what I could do myself. Zipper pulls. A zipper pull can be single or double sided and locking or unlocking. Locking pulls do not slide along the zipper teeth independently. They are locked in place until they are physically pulled. Double pulls enable enclosure panels to be deployed and zipped up from either side of the panel, inside or on the outside, if you're looking at an enclosure. Sometimes there is an obstruction in the way, such as a pole, and you need to zip up from the outside or you might be outside of the cockpit enjoying the cool free shower. Zipper top stop. A top stop prevents the zipper pull from sliding off the end of a zip. Sailrite recommends a stop on each side of the zipper, but I've only installed one per zip without any issues. Opt for the stainless steel or Vislon stops for corrosion resistance. The use of a top stop is personal preference. I found top stops easy to install with a plier and looked neat in comparison to melting the Vislon zipper teeth to create a stop instead. It's easily removed and decreases the risk of accidentally damaging your zipper fabric with heat. Zipper tabs for easy pull on tight panels. Using a zipper tab on a pull makes for easier closing and opening of the enclosure when you're trying to pull the enclosure in an awkward direction. Easy panels first. Start with the easiest panels first. For me, it was the sun enclosure first at the aft and side of the bimini where the panels were a straight drop from the top to bottom with no curves around bimini corners. From there I did the rest of the shade enclosure then moved on to the strata glass enclosure. Again starting with the aft and side panels first. Getting familiar with the material and gaining new skills by sewing the basic panels first will set you up to problem solve issues with complex panels. Also, the project will not become so overwhelming when broken down into just single panel builds. Mm -hmm. 
one needle per panel. Needles are cheap and a sharp, clean needle saves much cursing and frustration. Get your thread tension right. To ascertain the appropriate stitch tension and stitch length needed, practice your stitches on a scrap piece of the same material you will be using in your project. This saves time in the long run from having to start over when this happens. Roping zipper foots. Feet. I thought it was possible to get by with only a left roping zipper foot, which is half the standard zipper foot, allowing you to get your needle close to the zipper without obstruction. When it came to rotating the material to sew the opposite side of the zipper, I realised my material bundle wouldn't fit under the machine arm, or I was sewing the panel upside down so I didn't have a clear view of my stitch line. It turned out I needed the right roping zipper foot as well. Thread for task. Use the appropriate thread type for your project. For high UV exposed projects, I use PTFE thread, which is Lifetime or Tanara. PTFE thread is advertised to outlast the material it is sewing, whereas V69 polyester thread is UV resistant, but appears to have an average lifetime of five years. So re-sewing a small project is fine in a few years, but you don't want to be re-sewing an enclosure needlessly. PTFE thread is more expensive at eight cents per yard compared to V69 at one cent per yard. Using PTFE thread saves time and money in the long run by avoiding restitching over old degraded thread. The Sourite website has helpful resources on thread and needle recommendations, as well as other project tips and material selection guides. Match the stitch length to the material type. For Fifatex and Sumbrella materials, use a long stitch when doing medium to long runs. A short stitch over a short run is fine, but over a long run, these materials will gather if you use too short of a stitch and your three foot panel could end up being a few inches short. As I found out, this will be unnoticeable to the eye until you go to hang the panel. And it was back to the start after having to unpick it for me. For this reason, I opted for a five millimeter stitch length on these fabrics. For strata glass, use a medium stitch length. Although strata glass doesn't gather if using a short stitch, the short stitches will create a weak point in the material since it is perforating it. But you don't want a long stitch either because skip stitches are not uncommon when sewing strata glass. For box stitches at attachment points, I also use short stitches. Watch the stitch line. PTFE thread is prone to skipping stitches, which means the needle eye misses the thread and does not form a loop. So watch the stitch line carefully to catch gaps as they happen. I had many skip stitches with both the Fifatex and Strata Glass materials. Now through speaking with fellow sewers, some people shared my pain, while others reported no issues at all. But I sure did have them, and it was the source of a huge amount of frustration. I troubleshooted with the Sourright customer service team, and basically the outcome was this. PTFE is a slippery thread, so you will have skip stitches. Use a sharp needle. Sourite recommends that the eye of the needle is 40% larger 
than the thread thickness used. Inspect your machine's retaining ring cap spring and jib hook for burr damage from needle strikes. If you find any, then sand these with fine paper or replace them for new. Check your needle timing by placing the needle in its lowest position. Does it align with the hook? Skip stitches will be reduced when using tighter weave material as it holds the thread more securely. The Sowrite machine is a portable and affordable version of the expensive commercial machines professionals use, so it is not perfect. Use the following techniques to decrease the chance of skip stitches. These techniques came about through discussions with fellow Sowrite users and my own playing around. Adjust the bobbin and tension adjuster knob accordingly while practicing your stitches on a scrap piece of material. Turn the thread spool horizontal. Turn the needle 45 degrees. Watch your stitch line closely. If you miss a stitch, you can immediately reverse to fill in a gap. Now I have a caveat to the above. Avoid reversing stitches on strata glass because excessive piercing of the glass can cause a weak line in the material. To avoid skip stitches without risking the integrity of the glass, use a slightly shorter stitch length than you would on the Fifatex. I use three to four millimeters. Don't stress about it. I know I wanted my enclosure to be perfect, but as long as the stitches held the material sufficiently together, the old skip stitch wasn't detrimental to the project's integrity. And when you take a step back, you can't even see it. Marking the tracks track. Mark out a guide of where you intend to install the track. Pre-drill screw holes into the track. We installed screws five inches apart. Prepare the surface by slightly abrading it and then cleaning it with alcohol. We applied a small amount of 4200 sealant to the back side of the tracks to prevent water ingress. Heat up your curves. Use a heat gun on sections of the track which require a curve. Be sure to keep the gun moving. And if you overheat a section so it collapses, then while it's still warm, slide the Kita rope into the track to return it to its shape. Lubricate your Kita. On long stretches of Kita rope, such as our front panel, the Kita rope is difficult to pull through the track due to its friction. You've got to pull it down and across to get it past the screws in the track. Down and across. Yeah. So, lubricate your Kita rope so it slides easier. Be sure it's neutral because you don't want to use any lubricant that may damage your strata glass as the rain washes it down. Grand expectations. Having this enclosure has made this space functional. Previously in rain like this, we would have had to run around, gather everything up, dash inside, close the saloon door and stay in there until it stopped raining and then come out and it's all still wet. And this applies in the sun as well. We can work out here without getting burnt. I end up like a lobster pretty quickly. And more importantly, it protects all the equipment from rain and from UV damage. So our equipment, our electricals last longer as well. I got a few quotes by professionals on the enclosure and they range from 9,000 to 14,000 US dollars. Making this enclosure myself, I budgeted two and a half to $3,000. It came to three. 
and time spent was 200 hours. So I plugged away for a few months, but during that time, I got all these skills and no one can ever take that away from me. So if anything was to happen, I could make repairs. I've got stock aboard to do those repairs and any project that arises, I think I could accomplish it. So I've got those skills. I have that confidence. That's all the tips I have for you today. Thanks for hanging in there. If you've got anything to add, jot those tips in the comments below and be sure to join the sewing Facebook groups and there's other YouTube channels out there if you're looking for more information. See you next time. No one will be looking anyway because they'll be questioning what's going on with those pants. The pants are cool. I think you get it. Harry? How do you sail the boat if you didn't have an enclosure? Either get wet or I'd stand inside boat hook. <laughs> boat hook on the, the wheel or autopilot. Autopilot works as well. Toe. Come on.